For most of my life, I was a diehard Star Wars fan, and without getting too deep into it, as of a few years ago, that is no longer the case. But losing my love of Star Wars left a big, sarlacc pit-sized void in my heart just waiting to be filled by another sci-fi franchise. And so, I set out on a mission to find my next sci-fi obsession. I started with Planet of the Apes. I watched all nine films, the entire live-action television series, and all of the animated series returned to the Planet of the Apes. I loved it, but Planet of the Apes does not have nearly as rabid a fan base as Star Wars. There is no Planet of the Apes expanded universe, as far as I'm aware, and so after you've watched all the movies and TV shows, that's kind of it. But there has always been another major sci-fi franchise that rivals and, depending on who you ask, surpasses Star Wars in both the breadth of its content and the dedication of its fandom. Captain's Log, Stardate 41386.4 We're in pursuit of a starship of Ferengi design. Our mission is to intercept and recover a T9 energy converter which the Ferengi stole from an unmanned monitor post on Gamma Tauri 4. That's audio from the fifth episode of Season 1 of Star Trek The Next Generation. This episode, entitled The Last Outpost, is an important one in the greater history of the Star Trek franchise, as it marks the first on-screen appearance of the Ferengi, a species of large-eared humanoids from the planet Ferenginar that would serve as frequent antagonists to the crew of the Enterprise D. Our power systems are failing. Deflector shield failing. Phaser's going inoperative, Captain. Captain, something is completely immobilizing us. It's a classic setup for an episode of Star Trek. Both the Enterprise ship and the Ferengi ship are drained of power by a mysterious source on a nearby planet, and each vessel beams down an away team to participate in a cooperative investigation, hopefully forging some sort of understanding in the process. I would love to sit here and gush over Star Trek The Next Generation, but... It wasn't the episode itself that provided this week's mystery, rather, it was something I saw in the subtitles during this opening scene. In a moment of silence between lines of dialogue from Patrick Stewart as Captain Jean-Luc Picard and Jonathan Frakes as Commander William Riker, a message appeared in the subtitles. An ominous message that simply read, Someone needs to stop Clearway Law. Welcome to Mount Molehill, a place where even the smallest mysteries become mountains. I'm Chris, and this week I'm trying to figure out why my Star Trek subtitles contain a cryptic call to action about something called Clearway Law. What is Clearway Law, and why does someone need to stop them? Let's make a mountain out of this molehill. Unlike most of the mysteries I'll be covering on this season of Mount Molehill, this whole Clearway Law thing isn't something that I had a previous interest in. Rather, it's something that was foisted upon me while I was attempting to unwind one evening and watch some Star Trek. And so, I didn't really have a good place to start with this one other than simply doing a Google search for the phrase, Someone Needs to Stop Clearway Law. And the first thing that popped up was an article published on September 20th, 2022 on lawnews.co.uk titled, What is the Clearway Law Controversy About? The article begins by describing a recent defamation judgment in favor of a British Columbia, Canada-based construction materials business against a customer who was leaving negative reviews for the business on Google and Yelp. The article uses this case as an example of why, quote, This should make people who try to tear down businesses with untrue statements online worried, end quote. The article then quickly pivots to the so-called Clearway Law controversy, and the author of the article recounts how their business, Clearway Law, a website that allows people to rate the performance of their lawyers, has allegedly been defamed online by the marketing manager of a law firm in Toronto. This marketing manager, the author alleges, had been making inflammatory posts on Reddit about Clearway Law, and even went as far as hiring a company that runs Reddit bot accounts to harass Reddit members of a particular subreddit and leave one-star reviews for Clearway Law on Google. 
It's all very confusing, and reading the article feels as though I've walked into the middle of a three-hour movie and I'm struggling to make heads or tails of it. The byline of the article claims that it was written by one Helen Greeney, but the bottom of the article states, quote, Author Alastair Vigier is the CEO of Clearway Law, a company that wants to change the legal industry via lawyer reviews and a legal question forum, end quote. I can already tell that this whole thing is going to be very difficult to parse, and the fact that all of this has to do with lawyers and law firms is making me a bit uncomfortable because, obviously, I don't want to say anything that can get myself into any sort of legal trouble. So I'm going to be very careful here not to make any claims or draw any conclusions. I'm simply going to compile the information that is available to me about this so-called controversy and allow you the audience, to come to your own conclusions. First things first, what exactly is Clearway Law? According to statements made by Alastair Vigier, CEO and founder at Clearway Law, in a YouTube video titled About Clearway Law, posted on September 16th, 2022, by an account named Clearway Law, the goal of Clearway Law is to, quote, matchmake between people that are serious about hiring a lawyer, end quote. In the video, when asked how Clearway Law accomplishes this goal, Vigier states, quote, The primary way is through a rating system. We want to get as many ratings for lawyers as possible. We're really just looking at the end of the day for lawyers that want to make a difference and want to actually help out, end quote. So basically, it's like a Yelp for lawyers. I decided to jump on clearwaylaw.com and have a look for myself. There's a search engine where ostensibly you can search for an attorney by name, what type of law they practice, where they practice, etc. After selecting a lawyer's profile from the list of results, you can see some basic information about them such as their education, practice areas, firm name, and firm location. You can also leave reviews for lawyers, which is the main selling point of the site. However, the search function does not allow you to sort or filter results by lawyer rating or number of reviews, so I found it difficult to find a lawyer that would be recommended based on the Clearway rating system. In fact, I clicked on a bunch of lawyer profiles on the site and was unable to find any that actually had any reviews on the site. That aside, the website does appear to function as described by Alastair Vigier in the aforementioned YouTube video. Okay, so we'll take the answer to the question of what is Clearway Law at face value. It's a website where people can search for, rate, and review lawyers. The next questions to tackle are, why does someone need to stop them? How are they inserting this message into subtitles for Star Trek The Next Generation? And who is behind the someone needs to stop Clearway Law campaign? In order to answer this, I decided to check out the Reddit post that was referenced in the lawnews.co.uk article. The post, submitted by user JackThemOv on December 29th, 2022 to the Law Canada subreddit is titled, Alastair Vigier and Clearway Law Using Lawyer Profiles Without the Consent of Lawyers. The body of the post is as follows, quote, Alastair Vigier puts lawyers on his website, https colon backslash backslash clearwaylaw.com, without their consent and refuses to remove the profile upon request. This should discourage anyone looking to work with him or seek his services. He has poor morals and ethics. Stay away. Should do something about him and take down his website. He is piggybacking on the hard work of others. I hope this gets the coverage it deserves. Edit. No, I am not the one behind the open subtitles. Stop asking me. Update October 2022. The LSO has confirmed they already have a case file number and is currently investigating the situation. End quote. So based on this post, the answer to why Clearway Law should be stopped is because the website allegedly posts information about lawyers without their consent and then refuses to remove their profiles upon request. The responses to the post range from supportive of Clearway Law to antagonistic towards CEO Alastair Vigier to, like myself, 
bewildered as to why a subtitle about Clearway Law had been inserted into the subs of their favorite TV shows and movies. Apparently, Star Trek The Next Generation is not the only piece of media in which the someone needs to stop Clearway Law message appears in the subtitles. Reddit users listed a variety of other shows and movies such as Better Call Saul, Ted Lasso, Ghost in the Shell, Twin Peaks, La Brea, King of the Hill, Atlanta, Bones, Survivor, and others. How did this happen? Well, Reddit user Antosino has a theory about that, which he posted as a response to a separate Reddit thread posted to the Piracy subreddit on August 16th, 2022, titled Clearway Law? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, in my subtitles? Antosino posits, quote, If you were really trying to stop somebody from doing something, you wouldn't make your one key point in limited available space something that is obviously not an issue and should be widely accepted, like reviewing a business or lawyer. It's worded specifically so I go, what the f***, why, and look it up, then finding their website or an article, most likely by them, about the fabricated conspiracy. Add on the fact that Clearway Law itself has been posting articles titled things like, what is all the Clearway conspiracy about that are basically just advertisements, and it's clear. They're trying to act like there is some big controversy to get people to check out who they are and hopefully start using the services to stick it to the big baddies trying to stop them from reviewing lawyers. Anybody can request who paid for advertising on open subtitles or anywhere else. I'm pretty sure that if I contacted them about this, user Clearway Law would be the one that placed the ads or somebody affiliated with them, end quote. So it seems that the answer to how this message ended up in subtitles is paid advertising. And here's basically how that works. Pretty much everyone is familiar with how a streaming service such as Netflix or Paramount Plus works. You pay a monthly fee in exchange for video content that this streaming service has produced or licensed. But there are other streaming services, most notably one called Plex, where that is not the case. With Plex, the content is provided by the user. Let's say that I have the DVD box set of Everybody Loves Raymond, and I want to be able to watch it without the hassle of actually using a DVD player. That's where a service like Plex comes in. I would rip my Everybody Loves Raymond DVDs onto my computer, set up a Plex media server, set up the Plex app on my smart TV, and then I'd be able to stream the show in pretty much the same way that I would on any other streaming service. The main difference is that I am the one hosting the content, not the streaming service. But that's not the only difference. When you turn on subtitles on a movie using a traditional streaming service such as Netflix, the subtitles are provided by Netflix. Plex does not provide subtitles of its own. Rather, it pulls subtitles from a variety of online sources, one of which is opensubtitles.org. And opensubtitles.org uses paid advertising in their subtitles as a revenue stream. The way this works is someone pays for ad space on open subtitles, and their ads are dynamically inserted into empty spaces in subtitles when there is nobody speaking in the film like that brief pause in the episode of The Next Generation. Well, the damn furring, eh? I need more information. What the hell are they using? Obviously, we've underestimated their technology, Captain. Considerably. So the final question to answer is, who is behind all of this? Let's go back to that very first article written by Clearway CEO, Alistair Vigier. If you'll remember, the article claims that the Clearway Law smear campaign is being perpetuated by, quote, the marketing manager of a law firm in Toronto, end quote. The article goes on to say, quote, He contacted me and demanded I took down the profiles of all the lawyers at his firm. He said only he could control the online reputation of his lawyers. He also posted that I was a molester on Google Maps, which was later removed by Google. A few of the lawyers who got bad reviews on Clearway now leave posts all over the internet, which say things like, 
someone needs to stop Clearway Law. It's unbelievable, but one lawyer even took out an advertisement on a subtitle website. Their advertisements have been successful. Once they started the advertisements, the Google searches for my company went from 1,000 people a month to 35,000. While I was writing this article, Jack the Mauve, the same person who is posting the Reddit posts and emailing us weekly, re-uploaded a review that Google has removed three times for being false. End quote. The article provides a screenshot of the Google review from Jack the Mauve, which says, quote, Alistair Vigier and his law firm were shut down for securities fraud in Vancouver. He uses lawyer profiles without consent to act like he is a big legal service provider. End quote. This accusation of securities fraud, along with various other personal attacks on Alistair Vigier, is repeated on the Reddit post submitted by Jack the Mauve. I was unable to find any evidence regarding any such incident. But there were some other claims of professional misconduct leveled against Mr. Vigier in the Reddit thread made by user Montreal Law. They claimed, quote, Alastair Vigier has deceived people throughout his life. He was a weekend warrior in the military for a year and barely served in the military. He created chaos with multiple businesses in Victoria. He hangs his hat on the whole 30 under 30 BS, but it was based on lies. He literally bankrupted a law firm in Victoria. He expended his father's money on a pipe dream with nothing to show for it. And I can go on and on. End quote. Again, I was unable to find any evidence to support this. Now, the reason that I bring all of this up is because there are so far two explanations for the question of who is behind all of this. One is the explanation provided by Alistair Vigier that his website has ruffled some feathers and now there is someone leading a smear campaign against him. The other, provided by Reddit user Antasino, is that this is all a publicity stunt masterminded by Vigier himself. Although that may sound cynical, it's not outside the realm of possibility in this day and age of viral marketing. But if a person were trying to promote their business, would they really pay for sock puppet accounts to leave reviews and comments calling them a molester, fraud, or weekend warrior? Sure, it might get some publicity, and even Vigier himself stated in his article that traffic to his website had increased dramatically, but I don't know, it just doesn't sound like that's 100% the case. And I think the positive responses to the Reddit post also provide further support that the whole someone needs to stop Clearway Law controversy is not totally perpetuated by fake accounts. One from user NewBlackBerry6623 says, quote, Doesn't sound unethical. Leaving reviews from the public? Sounds like a great idea. Something the lawyer can't modify or spam with fake reviews. A lawyer and their phone number sounds like yellow pages public knowledge. I've used several attorneys and had some shit service, so I'd like to find accurate reviews from a working man when I'm spending a week's paycheck for one hour of their work that they pay an assistant or paralegal $20 for. My best lawyer was a public defender, most of them morons with no clue. I actually had to educate myself and guide them. America's justice system really needs reform. End quote. Another response from user Desperate Trip 9 says, quote, It's just a site that reviews lawyers, and lawyers are super scared of people giving accurate reviews of how they've conducted themselves. Also, I saw at one point somebody said that as officers of the court, you shouldn't be able to post reviews about them because they're officers of the court. But following that logic, if you're saying that being officers of is the court is some kind of legal standing that you are a part of the court that makes you a part of the legislative branch, which de facto says that you consider yourself a part of the government, which means that you are a public person, which means that you can't shut down people for speaking about you because it is protected by the First Amendment, which specifically says that the government cannot stop people from expressing free speech, end quote. And while neither of those responses is particularly eloquent or even at times coherent, I did choose both of them for a specific reason. Because it's important to point out that both of these responses reference the American legal system and that Clearway Law is a Canadian company 
that catalogs and rates Canadian lawyers. If someone were paying sock puppet accounts to defend their business in the midst of a manufactured controversy, wouldn't they at least make sure that their comments were pertinent to the business in question? There is a third possibility that's sort of a combination of the other two. It is possible that the someone needs to stop clearway law controversy was a manufactured one, but that once it was put out into the world, it took on a life of its own and started to generate some actual controversy and negative publicity for Alastair Vigier and Clearway Law. I don't think we'll ever really know. And that's pretty much it for this week's mystery, which I apologize if it feels like it didn't really go anywhere. I did find some other information about this, but like I said at the beginning of this episode, I really don't want to get myself into any sort of legal trouble, so again, I'm not making any claims. I'm just presenting you guys with some of the information that I found and opening it up to the Mount Mole Hill audience. Let me know what you think. What is going on with the so-called Clearway Law controversy? Mount Mole Hill is written, produced, and edited by me, Chris, with music by myself and Alex Bainter. All other voices featured in this episode, apart from my own, are computer-generated. All of the sources used in this episode can be found in the show notes. This podcast features materials protected by the Fair Use Guidelines of Section 107 of the Copyright Act, all rights reserved to the copyright owners. If you have a molehill that you'd like me to turn into a mountain, whether it's a mystery that you just can't solve or just an interesting topic you'd like me to delve into, please reach out. You can email me at mountmolehillpodcast at gmail.com or you can call and leave me a voicemail at 505-218-6894. Follow us on Instagram to see updates and supplemental material for the show. Thanks for listening. I'll be back with another episode in two weeks. Mm -hmm.